Hey guys, it's Suzanne back with another teaching lesson. Your responses have been great on the last few lessons that I've done, and I know that you're enjoying these and I'm enjoying teaching them to you. Um, not that I'm perfect, not that I have all the answers, but I do love to teach and share God's Word. And we're going to get right into the lesson today. It's we're going to talk about undisguising the devil. Now, I'm taking this material. I'm doing it a little different. I'm not actually taking it from the book, but I'm taking it from the workbook of Priscilla Shire's uh, Armor of God. So all of this is relating to the Armor of God, and we'll actually be getting to the place where we're talking about the actual Armor of God. Don't let this throw you off today. Yes, we have one nail that came off. So as you see me flashing around, because you know I talk with my hands, just don't be thrown off with that one. I just picked it and popped it off yesterday. <laughs> it's life, folks. It's life. I didn't have my makeup people here today to get me ready for this video. <laughs> so let's talk about, last week we talked about the scripture, Ephesians six twelve, where we talked about that in our battles that we have, and our battles are real. I don't want you to think that I ever underestimate the real battles you're going through because I go through them too. But what we talked about in Walking in the Power of God, video one and two, and if you haven't seen those, go back and watch those first before you watch this one, uh, is that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Even though that's what we think, we, we have to look beyond and we have to look in our spiritual eyes to what we're really wrestling with. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts and wickedness in the heavenly places. And we're going to end up today talking more about the heavenly places. Um, but in order for us to have victory over the enemy, and that's the whole purpose of all of this. This is the whole purpose of me taking time to do this, is... Um, is I want you to live a victorious life with me. I want us to join together. I want us to be a um, army of women. And there's some men, that, I know there's some men who watch this too, but I know I attract a very large audience of women. And I want across this nation, and what God desires is for an army of women to rise up and to say, no longer, no longer, Will we be bound and tortured and tormented and our plans go awry, our families go astray because of the power of the enemy? Yes, he's going to come against us, but we've got the tools that it takes. So many of you have written on um, our page, Let Your Light Shine, about certain things, and, and that's beautiful that we can all come together and pray. I listened to a sermon today from Jensen Franklin on just a simplistic message, but about prayer and how to pray, where to pray, when to pray. Oh, I'm under conviction so bad from listening to that because I just got out of the shower a little while ago. I'm fixing to go get my boys from school. And I told the Lord, I said, I, I'm in a sense of prayer all day long and I'm seeking you and I'm talking to you, but I need to be more designated when where and the specifics and so i really listened and gotten under conviction and i'm going to share that with y'all later but he told us how critical it is to pray for our families because in order to have victory over the enemy we have to change our behavior and as adults we don't like to hear we've got to change our behavior do we i don't that's one of the great things about being grown up. You can kind of do what you want to, within reason, of course. But no more schedules from everybody else. No more, I mean, there's just flexibility. That if you want to veg out on the couch at night and, you know, watch TV and watch your shows, you can. So, changed behavior is hard. It is hard for me. So, changed behavior means that... Unless we, we have to change our behavior and how we come against the enemy. Some of us doesn't come against him at all. Some just say whatever will be, will be. Que sera, sera, that old song says. Well, I'm not a que sera, sera kind of girl. I am a girl that likes to take life by the horns. And I like to make change happen for me. But now, we tend to get lenient. We tend to... Um, 
get passive. Um, you know, in co-parenting, there lots of times there's a passive parent that will lead everything, leave everything up to the other parent to take care of it. And if we're not careful in our spiritual lives, we will get passive and say, well, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. No, no, that's, that's not true because he is combating. He is coming against us. We have to take authority over that. And if I, I mean, I'm still on page one. Hello. I'm never going to get past that. When we change our behavior, Satan will know that we are serious and that we mean business. When we designate a time to study, when we designate a time to pray, when we change our behaviors on the things that we do, they say it takes 21 days of doing something to make it to be a habit. So when we put into place spiritual habits, he's going to know that we mean business and no more of him jacking with our lives because we are going to be the winners. You cannot be Kesara Sara about your spiritual life. You have to take it by the horns and you have to go with it. So what I want is the people that are watching this, whether it be this week, a month, six months, two years down the road, to see a group of godly women rising up and going against a war for our husbands, for our fiancés, for our boyfriends, for our parents, for our children, our grandchildren, our church, our pastors, our spiritual mentors. Those people need us to be lifting them up in prayer. And that's what we can be by putting into application the very things I'm going to talk about today. And not only that, but go into war for ourselves. Yes, go into war for ourselves, for our own sanity, our own peace of mind. Who listen to this, our steadiness of emotions. As a woman, we know that our emotions can be all over the place, especially at particular times of the month. But we are such deep, loving, caring creatures that we get so emotionally involved. My husband will tell me sometimes, I wished you wouldn't get that involved. I can't help it. That's the way I was made. I was created that way. But I can have the Holy Spirit inside of me, working in me to steady those emotions so that when the enemy brings something against me, I don't fly off the handle. I don't go into depression. I don't think, oh, my Lord, everything's out of control. I can say, Father, God, in the name of Jesus, take control of this situation right now. That's when I take my gun out and I shoot the devils when I do that. When he brings things against me, wickedness from high places, and I just say, in the name of Jesus, I capture my thoughts. Holy Spirit, capture my thoughts right now and bring them into submission to you and to God the Father. Don't let me panic. Don't let me have anxiety. But Lord, let me rest in you. Let me have peace in you. Oh my goodness, how that is warfare. And how so much of that will be ripping the mask off of him where he comes in as temptation, as depression, as anxiety, ripping the mask off of him and saying, Satan, we undisguise you this very day and we recognize you for who you are and what you're trying to do to us. Whoo, I got into a preaching mode right here in the first nine minutes and I'm not even off of page one. So this one will probably be three parts. I don't know. But it's time for us to recognize evil for evil, good for good. You hear me? Evil for evil, quit living in a gray area and say, come out and say, I am a woman of God. I am empowered by the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of me. My thoughts, my emotions are going to be controlled by the Father God of heaven. His royal blood flows through my vein. We're standing. We are going to war on the devil. Woo! I got to get going. I will never get through with this lesson. So I, I mentioned in the last lesson how that we have to ask the Lord to open our spiritual eyes. We cannot just see everything for um, 
uh, practical purposes, just in the physical realm. We know as God's people that we've got to look at it and ask the Lord to open our spiritual eyes as we read his word to let those words be applied to our lives so that we have wisdom and knowledge in what we've read. And also to be constantly aware of the spiritual realm and also, also be constantly aware of the Holy Spirit working in us, guiding us, and then to be in a prayerful mode throughout the day. So instead of just focusing on the physical and the here and now, we are zeroing in on the invisible and the spiritual. Now, Monday, is it? That's Halloween some people take that very lightly. I take it differently because it is a spiritual night for some of the people that are in Satanism and into witchcraft. So therefore, I don't celebrate. Yes, my grandkids and my child always went trick-or-treating. Most churches have trunk or treat now and they have good alternatives just because this world's so crazy and you can't let your kids go all over the place uh, getting candy because you never know. So just like Halloween, when a kid comes up to your door, they're going to have a mask on. And then, of course, you're supposed to act scared or if they're a Disney character. But they are disguising their self that particular night to be something else. Uh, my grandkids are going to be the two guys from Ghostbusters. They've got their little things and they've got their little zapping guns and all of that. And um, so, but it's a night of masks. But in reality, Satan wears a mask every day, trying to disguise and come in and sneak in to our lives in ways that looks pleasant to begin with. But as he takes the mask off and he gets deeply involved into our lives, into what, what's going on in our lives, we realize that we have been fooled. You know, we're not fooled by many kids that come to our door and holler, trick or treat, you know. Because we know they're just kids coming to get candy. But, and I'll say sometimes, take that mask off and let me see who you are. You know, oh, you're scaring me. How much more should we say in the spiritual realm? Take that mask off, you stupid devil. I recognize who you are behind that mask. You're not coming in. See, he wants to keep his activity so cleverly hidden that we almost forget that he exists. We can be going along and saying, life is great. He's leaving me alone. Hmm, he's not leaving you alone. Just look for him. He's somewhere. Him or one of his... Now, he can't be everywhere. He's not like God. But he's got the imps. He's got the angels that fell from heaven with him. He's got his imps and demons of hell to go around and to do activity for him. So don't be fooled and think everything's going great. I don't need to pray right now. I don't need to pray over my children. My children are doing great. You better pray over your children every day. You better pray over your husband every day, your grandchildren every day, because the Bible says that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He sneaks in. The Bible also says that he's like a roaring lion. He's going around seeking whom he may devour. So uh, lots of times he's just masking himself as something else. But with your spiritual eyes open, you will be able to watch and see and know and God will direct your path. Um, we live in a society that such a large majority is not aware of the spiritual world that we know that exists. Second Corinthians eleven fourteen, and and as I've encouraged you in lessons before, get your journals out so that you can write these scriptures down and go back and read them after this lesson is over. But Second Corinthians eleven fourteen says, and no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Have you ever experienced this in your own life before where you felt like something was good, something was okay, and then only to find out that it was darkness being brought into your life. Um, I can remember years and years and years ago, a long time ago, that a particular person came into our church and claimed to be um, in a ministering spirit. And I never once felt good about that person. That person was allowed to speak. That person worked their way into some of our groups of friends. 
but I never felt comfortable around that person. Never. Other people were just becoming big buddies, not me. I always stood back, and in the end, my spirit was exactly right. Now, you're just like, well, why did everybody else not know? I don't know. I just know that my spiritual radar at that time said, stay back. This person is not what they say they are. And I stayed back. I had a small encounter one night where this person said something totally inappropriate to me, which just totally confirmed. So if we will keep our radar on and keep our senses alert, we won't be as much out to let things come in that um, shouldn't come in. We, you know, every day you encounter new people, or maybe not new people, but you encounter people. Your spirit, the Bible says that our spirit will bear witness with one another. And, and you know, sometimes at work you have to be put in circumstances where you're with non-believers and you're with people that live a totally different lifestyle, but God will guard you. He will keep you. I promise you, I've been in circumstances like that before. You don't have to agree. You don't have to laugh at their dirty jokes. You don't have to go out for drinks. You don't have to do this and do that. God will sustain you in what you believe and what you do. So spiritual victory is directly connected to your ability, to my ability, to undisguise the enemy. There's sometimes when it's just like I told you, my spiritual radar went up, but then there's been times where I've gotten to know people and I'm like, mm, something just don't feel right. Or a situation may come up, especially when you're raising children. Please listen to that radar. When a group is going off and mothers that you know, that you trust are taking kids off, but you don't feel right about it, don't do it. Ashley growing up was a great kid, but I went through a divorce when she was uh, 15 years old, which was a hard time. But she and I have always been very, very close and we've maintained a close relationship. But there were times when her group of friends, and they were good kids, I'm not saying they didn't ever, th ever do anything wrong because I know what they did, but overall, basically, they were good kids. But there were a couple times I said no. Mother, why? Ashley, all I can tell you is I don't feel good about it, and I'm just saying no. And it would hurt my feelings to tell her no, because I would know how badly she would want to go. But in my gut, something told me no. And I know that I kept her from a lot of harm, and she even came back and told me later. And parents, you need to listen to this. She came back as a young adult and said, we were talking about it, and now she's got children of her own that she'll have to start doing that. But she told me later, she said, Mom, some of those times when you told me no, I knew I really didn't need to go, but I could have never told them no because of the peer pressure. But by you saying no, it gave me an out to say, I, I want to go, but my mother won't let me go. Y'all just go on without me. That was spiritual wisdom. And whatever it was that she wasn't supposed to have been involved in, I pulled the mask off the devil by listening to the Holy Spirit direct me. And she told, oh, how priceless this is. That she told me later, Mom, when you told me no, it gave me an out not to go somewhere I wasn't supposed to go. And what the Holy Spirit is telling us through this is he is giving us an out to not go where we don't want to go, not to do what we don't want to do. He says, I'm telling you, this is not good. This relationship's not good. This job's not good. This place you're wanting to go, this group of people, this situation, this place on Facebook, this place, social media. It's not good, and you know in your gut it's not good, so don't do it. Don't do it. He's giving you an out. I had no idea this lesson was going this way. had no idea. But we, when we obey the Holy Spirit, we undisguise the devil. He hates it. We uncover him. We unveil him. We unmask him. 
And that's half the battle, guys. That's half the battle that we're fighting. Say, so, Susan, why do you keep talking about being in a battle? Because we are from the day we take our first breath on this earth. He is after our soul. But through the power and through the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ, we can take back that authority and say, no, no, no. You don't have me. You don't have my husband. You don't have my wife. You don't have my children. You don't have my grandchildren. You don't have my parents, my brothers, my sisters. I've ripped the mask off of you. I'm praying for those people. And I am in battle with you. Because once you do this, it's half, it says, but it's the half your enemy doesn't want you to pay much attention to. I said, you're, we have fought half the battle, and it's the half that he doesn't want us to pay much attention to because you automatically begin to threaten the tyranny, his tyranny in your life. Once you recognize there's a problem, you can start doing something about it. You can start changed behavior. This is only part one of undisguising the enemy. I'm going to come right back with part two of how we can do that and scriptures that stand behind that. So I pray today that the things that, oh, the Holy Spirit just, oh man, man, he just, he just touches me sometimes when I'm teaching these lessons and it just floods me. Just like using that example. Apply this to your life and know that God is empowering me to share with you on a very simple, down-to-earth basis of what he can do, will do, and wants to do for you. He said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So until next time, until part two of Undisguising the Devil, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.